In this video, I'm going to show you how to refresh your blog content using Google Search Console so that you can gain more traffic to blog posts that might not be getting the traffic you would like. And this is also a really great tip for those who are affected by the helpful content update. So let's go ahead and dive into it. Now, if you're unfamiliar with the helpful content update, which you probably aren't if you're on this video, but I want to give you a quick overview of what this is and why it has been detrimental to a lot of people's websites. So the helpful content update occurred in September of 2023. And basically this was Google's way of deciding which blogs or websites were helpful for readers and which ones weren't. Unfortunately, they didn't do a very good job of understanding what readers want. And unfortunately, I've seen a lot of really high quality websites be affected by this update and pretty much lose all of their traffic because of it. Now, I understand that there are certain people out there saying there's ways to grow from this, there's ways to recover from this. There hasn't been anyone who has come out and said, hey, I've fully recovered from this, especially those who were majorly hit by this update. But this is going to show you exactly how you can take Google Search Console, one of the greatest tools at your disposal, and it's free, and use it to refresh your content. Now, again, this isn't just helpful for people who were affected by the helpful content update. This is for people who need help across the board. This is for anybody who is not seeing traffic from certain blog posts that they really want to see traffic from. You've put in the effort, you've put in the work to get the content out there. You should be benefiting from all of your blog posts. So the very first thing that I recommend doing is actually going through your content and pruning the blog posts that aren't necessarily related to your niche or topics and that aren't gaining traction with Google. So for example, on our website, Mike and Laura Travel, we mostly talk about travel, but at some point we were also writing about online English teaching because I was an online English teacher way back in the day. And so I was constantly adding information about how to be a successful online English teacher while traveling the world. I no longer do this. It is not really a viable option anymore. So I don't actually recommend it all that much, but I still had all of this content on my website. Unfortunately, I realized that a lot of it was out of date. A lot of it was again, no longer applicable. And yet I still kept it on our website because I thought that it was bringing us traffic. Traffic. It was not bringing us traffic the way that I thought it was. And so what I did is delete all of the content that was no longer applicable and that was only related to teaching English online. So I went through, deleted those posts from my website. I de-indexed them from Google just so that, again, Google could see that I was keeping content fresh and relevant to the topics that I was talking about. Now, you might be wondering, if I don't have a niche website, is this going to be a problem that I'm talking about various locations or various niches, you should have one general niche. So for example, ours is travel. If you are a travel blogger, but you also are talking about home decor and makeup and parenting or whatever it is, you probably should focus on just one topic because the saying goes, jack of all trades, master of none. And that is very applicable here, especially with websites when you need to show authority to Google. So again, I went through and I deleted all of the content that was no longer relevant to my broad niche, which was travel. I deleted all of the online English teaching stuff to show Google, hey, I'm staying up to date and fresh with my content. The next thing I did was I went into Google Search Console and I found the blog posts that weren't doing as well as I would hope even though the content was really great, it was firsthand experience, and I have content around it so that I could interlink. Now, I came up with several different topics. As you can see, one of my blog posts, Hikes Near Bend, Oregon, over the last three months has only gotten five clicks, and it generally sits in a pretty low position on Google, on average for all of the keywords we're ranking for it. What I decided to do, instead of deleting this post, because it is still applicable to the content that we're writing, we tend to write about hiking, 
Oregon, Colorado, you know, these kind of places. And so I didn't want to delete it and get rid of my work. So instead, I'm going to refresh this blog because I want Google to see it as fresh content, but I also want to give it a better chance of ranking. So how did I do this? I went into my blog post here. I clicked in so that it now has a filter. You can actually just do this yourself by clicking on new and then adding the filter of the exact blog post. And again, as you can see, it's not doing very well traffic wise. So I'm going to come over to where it says queries and it's going to show me all of the keywords that I rank for related to this blog post. For example, if you were to type in walking trails, Bend, Oregon, we're sitting at about 45 for placement on Google. It's not very good. We probably won't get a lot of traction with that. And so I might want to go in and optimize this post so that again, we can gain traffic to this post that does deserve to be seen by readers. My advice is to start digging through the search queries that you already are showing up for. You can even put on total impressions. This can help so that it can help you decide if there's a better keyword that you could target for a post that you've already written. The goal is to find a keyword that is pretty similar to what you had already written about. For example, on the post for hiking trails in Bend, Oregon, I also rank for hikes in Bend, Oregon. I rank for Bend, Oregon hiking. I rank for walking trails, Bend, Oregon. Again, not very high. I'm not getting very much traction from it but I still am ranking for it, okay? And so I wanna go through these and I wanna find some keywords that might help me rank better because they're easier keywords to rank for and I can write a fresh blog post using the content that I already used. Here I am in the original post, 19 Greatest Hikes Near Bend, Oregon. These are all based on my own experience. We used to live in Bend, Oregon. And so for us, this was a blog post that was well done. It was something that was very close to my heart because again, it was all personal experience. As you can see, I have three sections here. I have easy hikes near Bend, Oregon, moderate hikes, and epic hikes, meaning more difficult hikes. So as I go back into Google Search Console, I am still looking for topics that I could target so that I can reuse some of this content, but make it fresh and possibly rank for a keyword that's slightly easier. So as I'm going through here, I see some that really stand out to me that get me excited. The first one I see is hiking in Redmond, Oregon. To be fair, most of the hiking trails that are in this blog post are not in Redmond. That's the town north of Bend. And so I don't really have a lot of hiking trails on here related to Redmond, but it does give me some ideas. It does give me the opportunity to potentially target that keyword in another blog post, and then I can use them to interlink between each other, right? Because I'm building this pillar of information and content that's related to each other, and it shows my expertise. Not only do I know about the best hikes near Bend, Oregon, but I'm also writing about the best hikes in the city or town north of Bend, so it shows my expertise, right? So I probably wouldn't necessarily reuse the content in this blog post for a blog post about hiking in Redmond, Oregon, but again, it gives me some ideas. The next one I see that's very intriguing to me is easy hikes in Bend, Oregon. That right there stands out to me. I rank way higher for that one than I do for the one that I'm actually targeting targeting, which is hikes near Bend, Oregon. With that, I might go ahead and create an entirely new blog post about Easy Hikes Bend, Oregon. In fact, I already have a section in this blog post about Easy Hikes near Bend, Oregon. I can quite literally copy this section paste it into a new blog post and optimize it the way that I know how so that it is easy to read for those who are viewing the blog post and that it has a lot of local insider tips because that's really what Google is looking for these days. They don't want regurgitated content that you can just find by using an AI tool. They want really impressive tips, an insider guide, so that the readers have something unique. So 
what I did is I started an entirely new blog post. This one is called Easy and Short Hikes Near Bend, Oregon. Do you see how I'm optimizing not only for easy hikes near Bend, Oregon, but also short hikes near Bend, Oregon? I went in, I literally copied and pasted the old content into my new blog post, and I then optimized it the way that I think is going to be really helpful for readers to flow through the blog post easily. First, I gave it an overview. It's always important, especially post helpful content update to get to the point as soon as possible. If I were to write the blog post, seven easy and short hikes near Bend, Oregon, and instead I decided to give people how to get around Bend, Oregon, where to stay in Bend, Oregon, what to pack for a hike in Bend, Oregon. If I gave that to them first, I'm not satisfying user intent. They came to this blog blog post to find the best short hikes or easy hikes in Bend, Oregon, I need to give that to them right away. And if you have any blog posts where you're kind of dilly dallying before you get to the point, switch that around, you will likely see an increase in rankings. Now here I have my very first header. Again, it's an overview. I give them the very helpful information right away at the top of the post before diving into more information about the post itself. I then include my own personal photos. If you have them, that can certainly help. There's a new feature on Google that one of our students just pointed out that does tell the readers whether or not that's original content and original photos. So they can help you in this case. And again, this is one of my original photos. And then I've also included notes. So I include very important information. I believe I did it in a way down here. I said local tip. That way it shows people that I used to live there. I am talking about this destination because I have expertise that you might not find anywhere else. And I've continued that throughout the post. I'm actually keeping this one relatively short. I'm seeing more and more that word count isn't as important these days as it was pre-helpful content update. So I can keep this one pretty short. I also added a map into this post because maps have been proven to be very helpful for readers. I created this myself in Google and I put all of the different locations of each of the hikes in there so they can click on them and go directly to it. And then of course, I'm going to add some frequently asked questions and I wanna make sure Finally, that I am including all of the different hikes in Bend that are easy, that other people have documented in their blog posts as well, who are ranking high on Google. If I see that three different websites have included another hike that I didn't detail, it means that it's something important that Google likes. So I should probably go in and add that information too. I don't need to say, oh, I've done this hike myself, but I can add the information and say, here's some more hikes that other people enjoyed in and near Bend, Oregon. I will then publish this blog post with a new URL slug. The new URL slug would be easy, short hikes, Bend, Oregon, rather than the hikes near Bend, Oregon. I would also save the information that I did not use from this original post. So for example, I have moderate hikes near Bend, Oregon, which I can then go into Google Search Console and see if there is possibility to expand on that topic in another blog post. And then I also have more difficult hikes that I can add to a completely different blog post as well, maybe targeted toward difficult hikes near Bend, Oregon. And then finally, I saw some other keywords that I thought were really interesting. Here I have hikes near Sun River, Oregon. That's the town just south of Bend. And a lot of my hikes that I detail in this blog post are actually in Sun River or nearby Sun River. And so I might want to take some bits and pieces from that original blog post and put it into a new blog post about hiking in Sun River. And then ultimately, once I have all of these posts and I'm ready to publish them, 
You don't have to have all of them ready at once. You can publish them one by one. But as soon as I start to use the same content from this blog post, the original blog post in a new blog post, I need to delete this blog post. I can no longer have it up because otherwise it would be considered duplicate content. And we just do not want that for Google. Google does not like duplicate content. It can see right through it. It looks very spammy. So don't do that, but don't just completely trash this post because again, you can get many different blog posts from this original post. Now, again, the reason why I'm publishing completely new posts from this is because Google is looking for fresh content. They're looking to make sure that you are keeping your website up to date. And one of the best ways to do that is to delete delete old content that Google is not rewarding and put new content up that Google will like and that is fresh fresh content that people will have a great time reading, a few quick tips, of course, use bullet points, give them helpful information right away. I include trailhead locations. I include the statistics of each hike and things like that because that is helpful for our readers. Additionally, these posts are going to be very helpful in gaining traffic back to old content that just is not seeing the kind of boost in traffic that you were hoping for after spending hours of time on this kind of content. And so this is one of the ways to do it. If you have any backlinks to your original post, go in and ask the person who gave you a backlink if they would be able to switch over that backlink to the new post or to one of the new posts. That's one of the tasks that you should do. The people who are giving you backlinks will want to hear from you anyways, because if you just go and delete this post and you take away that link, you are actually going to create a 404 link on their website. You can also create a redirect if you would like. However, I recommend just having fresh content and trying to get those backlinks to be moved over manually so that the new post now has some backlinks. If your blog posts do not have any backlinks. You need to get backlinks to your posts. They still matter in 2024, especially post helpful content updates. So make sure that you are going in and you are getting backlinks to these blog posts. If you need help, with backlinks, I do have a free guide. I'm going to leave the link in the description below. So make sure to grab that free guide on how to get backlinks. It's an ebook that I wrote last year called Backlinks Pro. I have since updated it to make sure that it is fresh content and very helpful for you going forward in your pursuit to get some backlinks. So I am going through all of my posts. I am doing this, especially for the posts that are just not gaining traction with Google the way that I would want to. And I am creating fresh content from those blog posts. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments. I hope this was helpful for you and I'll see you in the next video.